uh, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, we're excited to have you around for the second installment of Mountain West Small Business Finance's Masters in 504 Lending. Uh, today's uh, presentation will be delivered by Blake Beck. Blake is one of our loan officers out of our Utah County office. Uh, Blake, I think you've been with Mountain West for 10 years now, is that correct? That is correct, yeah. So um, we're excited to have Blake give this presentation, just a few housekeeping items. Um, we'll mute all the participants as we're going through this um, presentation, but please feel free to use the Q&A feature. And then also we'll um, unmute the participants at the end uh, for a question and answer session. So with that, Blake, thanks for your preparation and take it away. All right, well, thank you, Danny. And uh, uh, good morning, everybody. And welcome to uh, the Mountain West Small Business Finance, the Masters in 504 Lending. Uh, last month, we got to hear from John Evans, the president of Mountain West, and he did a great job kind of explaining the process and kind of our application process as well. And today we get, I get the opportunity to discuss the basics of 504. Um, you know, as I got thinking with the basics of 504, like we could be here all day or we could be here 10 minutes. It really kind of <clears throat> depends how in depth we really want to go. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to use that. Q&A up above, uh, Danny, he's gonna monitor those and we will answer those questions as they come in. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so as I mentioned, I am Blake Beck. I'm down here in the Orem office. Uh, again, we have our main headquarters in Salt Lake. We also have an office in Logan and down in St. George. So I'm here in the Orem office and we also have Brooks Harbertson. He is also the loan officer down here. So. Uh, excited to, to start this training. All right, so real quick, some of the topics that we want to cover today is, you know, who is MWSBF? Um, why should we go 504? I mean, why should a, a bank want to go 504? Why should a borrower and, and why would Mountain West? Um, we'll talk about eligibility, um, standard 504 structures, We'll touch into an expansion refinance program and conventional refinance program. And when is a good time to use a 504? All right, so as in uh, pretty much anything, there's gonna be players or teams involved. Um, when we do an SBA 504 loan, the players that are involved with an SBA loan are traditionally a third party lender, which is going to be a bank or a credit union, and then a CDC or SBA, uh, so in this case, Mountain West, small business finance, and then a borrower. So we have the, the three of us that we're all trying to work towards the same goal uh, to get this SBA 504 loan together. Um, real quick, Mountain West, small business finance is a certified development company. We used to just say CDC, but over the last couple of years, we don't use, want to use that term as loosely anymore, but we are a certified development company, meaning we are certified and licensed by the SBA to do all the packaging, underwriting, and servicing of SBA 504 loans. Um, we are not employees of SBA. However, I know a lot of our uh, third party lenders refer to us as SBA towards their borrowers and that's okay, but we are not employees of SBA. We are governed by uh, the rules of the SBA and the, and the regs of the 504 program. Um, Mountain West, uh, we are a nonprofit. Um, we are a uh, 501c4 company. Um, again, with Mountain West, we are able to serve, since we are a certified development company, we are assigned to uh, regions or areas. And our area that we can serve is the whole state of Utah, the whole state of Wyoming, plus the surrounding uh, states of Utah. So, for example, um, with 
Nevada, we are able to go a county deep into Nevada. Um, that's Las Vegas, um, Wendover, same thing in Idaho. We can go a county deep into Idaho, Colorado, and even Arizona. So we are able to do other loans besides just locally here in Utah, which is pretty cool. All right, so why would a third party lender or a bank want to do an SBA 504 loan? There, there are many advantages for the bank to do a, an SBA 504 loan. It can help you maintain liquidity by doing a loan for only 50% of the total project cost. It can help you better serve middle market clients. You can also have a loan for you guys that are, you're at an extremely low LTV. Um, also, the bank could possibly sell their loans on a secondary market. And it also allows you to provide your, your client with an excellent loan. Um, why would Mountain West want to do a loan? Well, it's, it's kind of, it's our job. And uh, also some other benefits for the surrounding area, um, economic development program. Um, we also help create jobs here in the area. We enhance the local uh, economy. And we also <clears throat> help keep businesses in Utah and bring businesses to Utah. Again, why would a client want to do an SBA 504 loan? Um, well, there's many reasons. One, they can get either a 10, 20, or a 25 year fully amortizing loan on the SBA portion. Um, on our portion, that loan is at a fixed rate and we are, we are usually fixed below market. Our, our rate um, is below market currently right now. We are hovering in that 3.8 to 3.9% and that is fixed for the life of the loan. Another advantage for your borrower to go SBA 504 low, uh, loan is they can have a low down payment. They can get as low as 10%. Traditionally, most SBA loans will, will, will require a 10% down. That can change on a few um, reasons, and we'll get into that a little bit later in eligibility. Um, speaking about the down payment, it's always good to kind of cover where that down payment can come from for borrowers. Uh, traditionally, when we look at the down payment, we are going to look to see if it's either going to come from personal or business or possibly both. Um, we will all, we'll require a personal financial statement from the borrower. Um, there they'll indicate the, the cash that they have either in a checking or savings account and we'll ask if that's going to be used for the down payment. It can also be cash that they have on the balance sheet of the business. Um, again, we just need to know where that down payment is going to come from. Uh, if they don't have the cash, there are some other avenues that they can take to get the down payment. It can be borrowed. However, if it is borrowed, we'd like to still like to see them put some money down. So let's say if it's a 10% down payment, they could borrow or borrow 5% of that down payment and the other 5% could come from personal or business cash. Um, they could also get a home equity line of credit. They could get a gift from family or friends or maybe even use a 1031 exchange if they sold a property, get into a new property. Just keep in mind, if they do borrow the down payment, we do need to add it into cash flow to make sure that they can service the debt and service the proposed debt for the building. Another thing they can use for a down payment is land equity. Um, please keep in mind, if they have owned the property for two years or longer, we can use appraised value minus any outstanding balance they have. Now, if they've just purchased the, the property within six months or within two years, we have to take the cost minus any outstanding balance if they financed it. If they just paid cash for it, then we can just give them the dollar for dollar of that value if it's less than two years. All right, so how does an 
SBA 504 loan work? Well, as we mentioned earlier about the players, we have a third party lender, which is a bank or credit union. They will usually uh, loan up to 50% of the total project cost and they will be in a first uh, trustee position. So again, it's a great loan for a bank because you're at a first trustee position at 50% of the total project cost. The CDC can lend up to 40% of the total project cost and we will take a second position behind you guys. And the borrower can provide a minimum down payment of 10%. Again, this can change if one, if it's a special purpose property, uh, SBA has provided a list to us of special purpose properties, but a hotel, motel, bowling alley, movie theater, a oil lube that has a pit, those are all considered a special purpose property. And SBA will require the borrower to bring in an additional 5%, meaning their total down payment would be 15%. SBA would drop to a 35%, the bank, you guys would stay at 50. Um, it could possibly get up to a 20% down for our borrower if it's a startup. Uh, so if they are new and it's a special purpose, we could get, see as much as a 20% down payment. Again, you don't need to know that. You just need to know to contact a uh, representative here at Mountain West and we can take care of all that for you. Um, we've got a quick YouTube video we'd like to share. Running a successful small business isn't easy, but you're doing it and now you want to expand. You need a new building and a loan, but with uncertainty in future interest rates, a loan with a variable rate could hurt your business. So how can you get a loan with a low fixed interest rate, small down payment, and with monthly payments that you can manage? These features can be found in a 504 loan through Mountain West Small Business Finance and the Small Business Administration. How does it work? Well, three different parties will fund the cost of your building. Typically, 50% of your funding will come from a bank or credit union. 40% will be provided by Mountain West with an SBA 504 loan. The other 10% will be your down payment, which can be cash or real estate equity. Other funding allocations may be necessary. With the SBA 504 loan, you won't have to worry about variable interest rates and higher costs. But to open this window, Mountain West will need to do the following. First, getting your information. Mountain West will gather financial information to complete the 504 loan application. Mountain West will also make sure that the other lending institution has the data to start their loan application. This coordination speeds up the processing time. Second, determining eligibility. Mountain West will need to verify that you are a small for-profit business that will occupy most of the facility to be financed. Mountain West Loan Committee will review your information to make sure you are credit worthy for the SBA, who will make the final credit decision on your application. Third, application submission and follow-up. Mountain West will effectively see your application through to the SBA in following up for the best chance of getting a timely response. Fourth, once your loan is approved, the next step is to get the funding. After making your down payment, the bank or credit union will fund the rest of your project at purchase or during the construction phase. Upon completion of the purchase or construction, Mountain West will secure the SBA 504 loan funds and then pay down the bank or credit union loan, after which you will have two loans, one from the bank or credit union, the other from Mountain West. This process enables you to get a 10, 20, or 25 year low fixed interest rate loan a major benefit for working with Mountain West and the SBA. This way of funding provides a win-win-win. The win for the bank or credit union is that they don't have to finance the whole project, so approval is potentially easier for you with more favorable terms. Mountain West and the Small Business Administration wins in providing a loan to help support economic growth with more jobs. Most importantly, you win by having the 504 loan with a low down payment, a low fixed interest rate, and getting the full funding for your business project. Find out if this window of opportunity can be open to you by talking to a representative of Mountain West Small Business Finance today. 
So just as uh, the quick YouTube video explained, it it did a great job in in about three minutes. What I'm taking on going on 20 minutes. So um, with the 504, we have some basic eligibilities. It needs to be an operating business, and it must be for profit and located here in uh, the USA. Again, with SBA, it needs to be a small business. And SBA has gave, given us a definition of small business. So we need to, we'll gather tax returns of the business plus any of their um, affiliates. And what we will do is we will run a, a test to make sure that they are indeed a small business. So they need to have less than 15 million in tangible net worth. And then what we'll do is we'll take the average net income from their taxes for the last two years. And if, as long as it is under 5 million net income, they are considered small business um, in SBA's eyes. Another uh, basic eligibility in, in occupancy is SBA 504 loans. It is for owner occupied. Um, SBA wants us to do loans that the business is gonna occupy not so much in investment companies, but just so much that it is going to be owner occupied. Now, if you have an applicant that is looking to buy a an existing building, the occupancy rule is they need to occupy at least 51% of the space. However, if we do any kind of remodel, they should occupy the space that they are remodeling. Now, if you have a borrower that is wanting to build a building, um, SBA will require more occupancy. And they figure if they are building a building, they should build it to suit. Um, so in this case, the borrower needs to occupy at least 60% of the space and begin to occupy another 20% in, in three years. However, they can lease up to 20% indefinitely. Now, when it comes to occupancy, we have to get uh, creative. Sometimes if, if they're buying an office condo and there's two units that are un, under the same legal description and parcel number, um, it's hard to get that 51%. However, we can include common areas, so entrances, hallways, um, shared bathrooms, closets. We can give that common area to our borrower for the benefit of the doubt. That, can, that way it can get them over that 51% on those existing buildings. Yes, we have done projects that have had residential properties in them. We've had commercial buildings that may have, maybe have had an apartment or something. Um, in that case, we have been able to get those approved. Again, the, the building needs to be occupied by the borrowers. So as long as our borrowers are occupying 51% of the space, um, we can get those type of projects approved. All right, so what is an SBA 504 loan? As we learned in that YouTube video, it can be used to purchase land and building, mainly fixed assets. So we can we can also finance larger pieces of equipment. Um, this equipment really consists of like a, a printing press or a machine press, laser, bigger pieces of equipment that are stationary. We can finance those. And depending on the life expectancy of those pieces of equipment, it will determine on what term alone we can go. We can either go a 10 or 20 year. It really depends on, on the piece of equipment. And what we need to get if they buy new equipment, we'd have to get a letter from the manufacturer just stating that, you know, this piece of equipment will last for 30 years. And if that's the case, we can adjust our loan term accordingly. Um, so eligible project cost, purchase of land and building, constructive building or remodel, we can also include FF and E into a project. Um, so furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Um, soft costs, we can include appraisal fees, environmental fees, um, points, origination, interest, um, construction contingency. So we're going to review a, a quick example of a 504 loan and how it works. This is just a standard structure. So we have a purchase of an existing building of 1 million, renovation cost of 500,000, plus we have points, fees, contingency of 80,000. So a total project cost of 1,580,000. The bank would <clears throat> do a loan at 50% or 790,000 in this case. Um, the SBA would do a 40% loan 
or 632,000, and the borrower's 10% down payment is 158,000. Now, if you called in and said, I got a question and you kind of gave us these numbers uh, here at Mountain West, we could send you what's called a sources and uses of funds. This is a form that you can give to your borrower and show them and say, this is how an SBA 504 loan works. Um, as you can see in the top section, we have project cost. We have the purchase of land and building. We have the um, improvements. We broke out professional fees and other expenses as a con construction contingency and interim interest. So we have our total project cost. In the middle, we have our project financing. This is where we'll break out the 50, 40, 10 structure. So you can show, the, show your borrower what their down payment's gonna be. Now on the SBA, you wouldn't have to collect our fees. SBA, we roll our fees into our loan. Um, under the debenture and fees, we have our net proceeds at that 632,000. As you can see, that is 40% of the total project cost. However, when we would close our loan with our borrower, they would have a gross debenture rounded up to the nearest thousand of 656,000. That's what their note with Mountain West or the SBA would be is for that amount because we would include our fees into our loan. Um, we can hurry and put in the terms of the bank. We run a 20, 25 year um, term. That way they can decide what debenture they would like and we can give them a quick and, uh, payment. It's just something tangible you can hand to your borrower and say, this is, if we go SBA 504 here, here's what the terms could be. And it's just, it's really easy for us to put these together. So if you do have a question on a project, give us a call. We can type this up as we talk. In most cases, I'll have it emailed out to you by the time we hang up the phone. And then you can share it with your borrower. All right, expansion refinance. Uh, the expansion refinance has been a great program. It's been awesome to use, especially if you have borrowers that already have, have a building and they are looking to do an expansion or maybe even buy an additional building. We can look at doing an expansion refinance. Um, <clears throat> some changes in the last few years, whatever the expansion cost is, we can include 100% of the or refinance dollar for dollar, whatever that expansion cost is. Historically, if we did a million dollar expansion, we were only able to include 500,000 of existing debt, but that has gone away. And now if we do a million dollar expansion, we could include up to a million dollar debt on the property if they had it. Um, we will go into a further training on refinances. So I'm just going to hit this briefly. So if you do have any questions, again, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, in this example, we have a borrower that, want, that owns a building and wants to do a million dollar expansion. He wants to do a phase two to his existing building. He needs more uh, warehouse space. So he has an expansion cost of a million dollars. However, he has an existing debt of 750,000 on the existing building. Well, he also has land equity, which can be used for his down payment. And then we have fees. So in this case, the bank will have a loan at 50% or 1,050,000. SBA will be at 40% or 840,000. And the borrower's down payment is going to be land equity of that 210. Again, in our sources and uses, we can send this out to you. But we change that top line item to land equity. So it shows the borrower is coming into this project with essentially no money down. He's going to be able to use equity in that, uh, that existing property that he already has. Um, again, we are including existing debt of 750,000. So he gets to re-amortize that money. Uh, possibly it could be even at a lower rate than what he had before. Again, it's pretty standard after that, shows the 50, 40, 10 structure, our fees and an estimated payment. So. 
All right, conventional refinance. Um, many of you may know that this was a pilot program a handful of years ago. Um, as of the last couple of years, SBA made it a permanent um, thing. So we can we are able to refinance conventional loans. So if a bank or credit union did a loan for a borrower for a building, let's say they went conventional and uh, now they would like to try to get a portion of that at a fixed interest rate for the life of the loan and go 504, we could do that. We would have to get a copy of the note and just make sure that it was for eligible fixed assets. In this case, it had to be for, you know, as long as it can go 504 now and it was used for the purchase of the land and building, we're gonna be able to refinance it. Um, SBA has come out with an 85% rule, meaning as long as the debt, 85% of it was for that fixed uh, asset, we're able to refinance it. We can also, and this is new, we can also refinance government guaranteed loans. So if you have a borrower that has an SBA 7A loan or even a 504 loan, it can be refinanced. Um, anything that is government guaranteed and we, can, we are able to refinance those. Um, again, if you have questions on those, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, again, we can also use equity in the building for their down payment. And in this case, we can actually get uh, cash out. Um, SBA calls it eligible business expenses, but we are able to pull money out for the borrower if, if needed. And this is really cool because on most SBA 504 loans, as you know, we're not able to, to get cash out on, on those as you could a 7A. But in this case, with the conventional refinance, we could get cash out. It's up to 20% of the appraised value. Um, then we have our LTVs of non-cash out and cash out. Um, when we structure a conventional refinance, we have to have an appraisal. We're going to base it off the appraisal. So in this example, we had an appraisal come in at $4,850,000. Um, the borrower wanted to get $955,000 out for eligible business expenses. Um, eligible business expenses can consist of, of salary, wages, it can count for uh, utilities, rent expenses. So what we do is we will take the borrower's tax returns, we'll look at those expenses, and we have to kind of justify it to SBA that yes, this money could cover 12 months, maybe 18 months of these expenses. Um, so in this case, they're getting $955,000 out. They have an existing debt on the property for $2,335,000. Um, and they have land equity of just under 1.5 million. We've got our fees in there. In this um, scenario, as you can notice, the borrower's down payment is considerably higher. They have about 30% of the total project cost or 1,496,000 into the project. So what we can do is we can take the, between the bank and the SBA is we can take that existing debt and cut it in half. In our sources and uses, that's exactly what we've done. We've got our total project cost up above. In the middle, we have the bank and SBA at 34%. Again, SBA can never go over 40% and we can't be higher than the third party lender, but we can be equal to, um, especially if the borrower puts more than the required amount down. Again, this borrower commit is coming into this project with no cash down. We're using land equity for their down payment. We have our fees. And then again, we have our rate and terms and an estimated payment. Okay, so when you are out visiting with your clients and uh, and you're talking and, you know, this, these are some options that you can think of and when can a 504 be used? If you're out talking to a borrower and they want to purchase an existing building, well, is it owner occupied? If yes, and we could definitely go 504. Um, if they want to, add an additional location, they want to expand, we can go 504. If they have a lease with an option to purchase, 
Or if they want to buy land and construct a building, we can help with that. If they already own the land and want to construct a building, we can help. Um, if they own their building and they want to renovate or do an expansion, uh, we can also do that. Um, on that, I've we've done a couple of loans where we've helped them buy a building and then they wanted to do an expansion or renovate that. We can also do a whole new 504 or we can talk about the expansion refinance. We've got some projects where a bank will be in a first and a second and SBA is in a third and a fourth. So we have some options and we can explore those with you. Just again, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, if they want to refinance a building they already own, as long as they have a loan on it, we can refinance it. And we can do a cash out refinance. All right, some general information on the SBA 504 loan. So our affl applicant is usually going to form a real estate holding company. We call it an eligible passive company or an EPC. Um, then the borrower, um, and they'll become the borrower. We will look at the operating company. So we want to know what company is actually making the money. Um, and in some cases, we've had one or multiple operating companies be guarantors to our loan. We've had it where I've had loans where we have two operating companies and one real estate holding company, and both operating companies are going to use the space. So we can do loans like that. Um, they will be a guarantor on the loan. Um, <clears throat> again, we can also help people, maybe if their credit isn't a stellar or they have a a VK, they're not going to be automatically disqualified. Uh, we could definitely take a look at that. We're going to dig into it a little bit more. Um, we may even have to send credit reports into SBA, but if we have a good explanation of what happened, um, it's not a deal killer. However, if they have defaulted on any government or federal loans, that will be, uh, they will be disqualified from getting an SBA 504 loan. All right, what 504 cannot do, working capital, except in the expansion refinance, we can get some cash out. Um, AR financing, um, just small loan amounts of FF and E. Again, with SBA, we can do dollar amounts. <clears throat> I mean, we got some total project costs that are up towards 12 million. We've done some total project costs that are 150,000. It really just depends on the project. Um, when I say total project cost, our portion is definitely going to be below that total million. We can only go up to that the five million amount. Um, however, with the small amounts, traditionally we like to try to stay above fifty thousand on the SBA side. And as you can see in the example of those sources and uses, we have our fees, and a couple of those fees are just a flat rate. So. If it's a lower dollar amount, those fees are going to be a higher percentage versus if it was a larger debenture. Um, again, we can't just do small pieces of, of equipment. We can do larger pieces of equipment um, and we cannot finance inventory. All right, well, that pretty much wraps up the training for today. We don't want to take all of your time and we just wanted to hit the basics. Like I said, we could have gone into a lot of detail. Um, we could just hit the basics. Danny, do we have any questions? Yeah, there was one question that came in that uh, was asking about affiliation and how does the SBA qualify? What is an affiliate versus a non-affiliate? And uh, the the answer that was given, and I don't know if it went out to everybody, it looks like it just went to the individual that asked, but the SBA has changed their rules over time about what is an affiliate versus what is not. And um, at one point, it was pretty easy. It was just a, a percentage of ownership, and then we knew if it was an affiliate or not. Now they define it by control. So a, a company is defined as an affiliate if one of our personal guarantors um, has control of that entity. So typically that would mean a majority ownership. So, so the, they, they even take it a step further though, where it could be like relationships so of husband and wife or 
husband and or father and, and son or father and daughter together had majority control and could control the entity. And then we've even seen it sometimes where in a company's bylaws, the president and CEO might have control of that company as well. So in that case, it just kind of depends. So we do have to do an affiliate analysis on those entities if it is deemed that one of our personal guarantors has control over that entity. But uh, that's the only question that I saw come in. Uh, do we have any others before we wrap up here? Okay, looks like we got a question here. Um, we have our next meeting showing up as April 24th, which this is correct. That is a Sunday. Um, <clears throat> so we will get back out with marketing because we won't be having this on a Sunday um, to, to distribute that. My guess it should is be the fourth Thursday, the 22nd. Yeah, so that would be the 21st of April. Yep. And yes, you are obtained to, uh, you're able to obtain copies of the slideshow. We'll send those out. We'll actually be sending out a recording of this so you can share it with other people in your office. Okay, it looks like we have one other question here. Are storage units considered special purpose by the SBA? No, they are not. <laughs> <laughs> the storage unit uh, lobbyist must be very strong <laughs> because for some reason, uh, storage units were excluded from the single purpose property, special use property list. Maybe you could make an argument that you could uh, convert them into apartment buildings without windows. I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah. no, they are not special purpose. So uh, the extra down payment of 5% would only be required if they were a startup. And then another question rolling in here, are there any alternative eligibility metrics aside from the $15 million net worth and $5 million net income? Uh, that pertains to the size standard of is somebody uh, a small business or not? And we are actually able to use both the SBA 504 size standard and the SBA 7A size standard. So if a company is too big in the tangible net worth or net income analysis to be deemed a small business, we are able to pull up the NAICS code and uh, find out what eligibility parameters are there on the 7A size standard as well. And it is typically revenue sales based or number of employees depending on the NAICS code. And I believe we have another training coming up on affiliates, correct Danny? I think we do this summer. So that might be a good one for you to, to attend as well. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for participating. We'll let you get back to your day. And more importantly, we'll let Blake get back to his birthday. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday, Blake. Thanks for doing this on your birthday. I know it's exactly what you asked for, was to deliver a master's in 504 lending training. Oh, yeah. No, thank you. Happy to do it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, we really everybody. appreciate your involvement. And um, we appreciate you using Mountain West for all your SBA needs. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Bye.